Howdy, I'm Justin Pulliam. An open records request is where you get information from the government. Since government's supposed to be, purportedly it's, by and for the people, thus the information belongs to us, not government master. And the process is you submit, whether it's Freedom of Information Act, FOIA, in Texas it's the Pub Public Information Act, so TPIA, it might also be called an open records request or public information request, O-R-R -R and P-I-R. For example, it goes by many different names. Some states call it a Sunshine Act. But the process is you ask for information and the government's supposed to hand it over. Uh, the federal government especially likes to hand over information on Friday afternoon. And uh, thank you, Carolina Kelly, for being a channel member, and Brian Bradley for subscribing. Uh, if you'd like to be a channel member, I think there's a join button uh, right below there. If you are a channel member, then hopefully you've seen the full body camera of Chad Roberts, uh, the former Eastland County Sheriff, uh, from the incident that happened there in Ranger uh, that really exposed how he and uh, cops like Ralph Ortega went around town uh, and basically terrorized people who they thought, uh, basically who were less financially fortunate than them, and, and they would go around and just jack with them for being poor, more or less. Uh, so that body camera is on the channel uh, for members. Just go to the members tab on my channel page. Uh, but the federal government especially likes to release information either in response to FOIA requests or just things they know they need to release because it needs to be in the public domain, they like to do it on Friday afternoon. And that's because most of the corporate media has already, you know, lunchtime on Friday, okay, it is time to go have a weekend. And they release it on Friday afternoon in hopes that maybe something else will happen over the weekend. So when Monday rolls around, the information that has been released is no longer the biggest story. And the 24-hour news cycle has picked up on, you know, whatever else is sensational at the time. So that's why they do document dumps on Friday. Now, the thing is, is that I work pretty much every day. And actually, YouTube is consumed more on the weekend uh, than during the week, uh, during like the school year. So doing documents on the weekend actually works great for us. So I thought I'd start a new series called Document Dump Friday, where I go through new information that I have recently received. And we might do it as an uploaded segment, but tonight I'm doing it live because I thought, like, I'm always really excited. Hey, what did I get? You know, you get the email, you get the package, you get the CD. You, you want to open it up immediately and see what's there. That's what I do, at least. And I think it's pretty exciting. So I thought it might be exciting for everyone else uh, to go along with me as we see new information. And hey, uh, uh, James, thanks for being here, and thanks for being a channel member. And uh, Chuck, thank you also for helping me with open records requests with Leon Valley and other places. Well, not really helping me doing them and, and providing me the information. See, that's what's great, and and I think uh, could be a great thing if we decide to continue this segment. So let me know if this is interesting to you. Uh, but if we continue this, it would be really cool to like show what records y'all get. So that and maybe it could be like a contest, like who found the best stuff this week. Uh, so there's options there. Let me know if you like it. Uh, extra good citizen, uh, Dr. D. Kenobi, thank you all for being here and being channel members. So today's records request is a request I did to Leon Valley on October 26th, I believe, of this year. And they're playing games, of course, but they did give me a little bit of in information, and it's pretty fascinating information. And it relates to this coherent cyber company uh, that they hired to, that Joe hired, Joe Savaggio, you can remember, fired Chief Joe, right? Uh, Savaggio hired them to try to take me out, to try to take Josh out, to try to take out Change Leon Valley, basically using the government, the public funds, uh, to retaliate against his political opponents. Oh, by the way, and Chip Seal, thank you for being here and being a channel member. By the way, I have a video edited that'll probably go live on Sunday evening, uh, Sunday afternoon, about the uh, political, the involvement of police and politics. It's something that happens all the time. It's so wrong. Uh, it should be official misconduct. They should be banned for life. 
from public service when they do it, but yet we see it over and over and over and over again. Uh, that video, when I made it, you know, I was watching these videos and it just made me mad. I might even title it, it This Makes Me Mad. Because watching how these police try to stifle people who are out there expressing themselves, doing such constitu core constitutionally protected activity, and here comes the police. Hey, right, Son, thanks for watching. Thanks for being a channel member. So that video is coming on Sunday. Let's get to the records. Here's page one, and it's uh, rather short. Like I said, they played games, so it's only 33 pages of records. This is the first, and, and to put this into perspective, um, effective date of 18 November 2019. I should have gotten a little bit more prepared. Let's go over here, over to the file server. Wow, 2019, that's really old. We're going to have to go to the... Hey, if y'all don't back up your stuff, be sure to back up your stuff because this is actually on a hard drive that crashed on me. But fortunately, I had it backed up, so they sent me a new one. All right, let's see what happened on November 18th. I seem to remember something happening on November 18th. Let's see here. Oh, yes, here it is. Oh, that's a cop watch. That's not what I'm after. Where is the one I'm after? So what is that? Is that recording audio? Oh, it's recording. That's still not what I'm after there. Where is the one I am after? It's somewhere in there. Okay, maybe that was before. I don't know. See, it's one of these files. Bear with me. Not that one. Maybe this one? Maybe if it'll load. MVI. What is an MVI file? And now the server or something's going on. What is going on here? Uh, so, oh, am I all the way frozen? 10-4. 1913, are you guys going to church right now? Okay, I think that those are off of the little camera. Hmm. Did I lose these files? I sure hope not. That would not be good. So what is that? Is that this recording is audio? Good. This is not good at all. Whoa. Was it an earlier day? Yeah, my live stream is going great, isn't it? Great live stream. You're all going to be like, Justin, get organized. Get organized. Okay, I know another way to find it. I know another way to find it because the state is so important. Oh, I found the I found the files now. They were in uh, they were in the projects folder instead of the video source folder. So actually, I'll take a break here and um, explain this because this is good for people to know if you start recording you want to start now getting yourself organized so where are you going to put your files how are you going to organize your information uh, that you get through open records uh, where do you put your video file project files all that how are you going to have it ba backup copied so you know if the police come to your home or whatever or you have a a um you know hardware failure uh, so what I do now, and what seems to be the best way to do it, I have a folder called Video Source. Actually, I have a lot of them, but I have the main one on my server, and everything gets cataloged by date and then title. And it used to be like date and then city, but then after a while when you have like 30 folders that say Rosenberg Cop Watch, that doesn't work very well. So now I do like the date, and then I'll say like Rosenberg and then I'll give uh, sh a few short descriptives of what happened so I can find it later again by subject. And so I organize all that in a folder called Video Source. I have a whole server for it, and it's backed up somewhere in a couple places. And, and the new files stay also on my computer while I'm working on them. And then I have a projects folder where is the information for like each video that I do, the graphics, the Premiere files, and all that. And then I have an entire hard drive that's also synced up to the cloud and does server and do a backup server for my FOIA. I have a whole hard drive that's just called FOIA, Drive R for records. 
Um, and so that's what I've done to get organized and, you know, do yourself a favor and start off organized because I didn't and it can create some messes. So, okay, finally here, I, I found, I think this is going to be the video file of what happened on, on November 18th, 2019 in Leon Valley. Yeah, this is it. This is it. Median number of voices required to win their council seat That'd during the, the right one here. Oh yeah, I was gonna wait for all five of the yeah, people from the committee. Okay, so we got five. You see, one of ninety-three was mine. Donna Charles, one of Cal's, one of ninety-four. There's copies of everything. Yes, ma'am. Here's all of them. Sir, you can get up. Um, everyone's filming in here. Yes, that's for a different reason. You have to leave. And what Sorry. reason is that? They have to be filmed with the cameras. <laughs> well, I am filming with yes. the camera. Yep. It's right. my First Amendment right. I'm a okay. member of the press. And you want to come outside? KSAT gets to film, I get to film. Do you want to come outside? I'd, I'd prefer to stay. Okay, then. Turn off your camera. Are they turning off their cameras? They have a right to be here. I love it. Well, they, they I have they a right to be here, too. they try to violate your rights while... When they try to violate your rights while acknowledging that you have a right, that's... <laughs> okay, so y'all may have seen this one before. Okay, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to keep the peace, he says, or some stupid blue lie like that. They continue. Uh, the other officer said it. We have disgraced police chief uh, Sosato. Uh, the other officer said it was okay. A supervisor. Who said that? The other officer. Did you already told them? Yep. No, the other officer. As long as we leave the opening. Can y'all not block the entrance, please? Just sign this. I could be able to hear. Oh, initial off that I received it. Okay, cool. That would be good. Go off the table. Okay, and it's amazing. Azar is really involved in all this. Crazy. Okay, so that's what happened on November 18th, 2019. I just want to put all that in perspective. I think it's very important. Joe retaliated by hiring this coherent cyber company. And um, they say they will do incident management services, coordinating efforts between company leadership, IT personnel, and investigative authorities to include the Texas Department of Public Safety, Texas Rangers Division, and the Federal Bureau of Investigation. They'll collect and analyze evidence to determine the cause of the incident. They'll perform a breach assessment of all enterprise hosts, i.e. workstations and servers, offering guidance on reporting incidents to external parties, U.S. CERT, whatever that is. I don't know. If y'all know, please put it in chat. And making recommendations to improve company security posture. A uh, customer will provide them with any equipment or support needed. And the scheduled performance is 40-hour retainer for one coherent cyber personnel is required and to be executed beginning November 25th, 2019. Remaining balance will be invoiced to the customer upon completion of the services listed above. And it doesn't even have the amount in here. So, uh, and you can see uh, Kelly there, corrupt old Kelly, signed it. Uh, before I move on to the next page, because I think the amount's on the next page, how much money do you think a, a one week of 40 hours of coherent cyber consultant, how much money do you think that is for the taxpayers? How much do you think one week, one 40 hour a week of coherent cyber cost? That guy, Scott, says 5K. John says 30,000. Extra says 30,000. Um, design says 12k. Any others? Any others? Any others? Any others? What is the crime? Says 15k. Chuck says 16k. Andrew says 14, 40,000. Whoa, 40,000. Yeah, they think they're that proud. Edgy 1800. Black Jesus two that are 20,000. Al says eight dollars. Maybe that's eight dollars now. I wish. Uh, Doug says 20,000, Bootleg Justice says 14,000, I'm sorry, 40,000, 
Oh, man. Well, okay, well, I probably just let it slip. So we'll draw it off there. Did anyone say 14? I think someone did. Oh, no. Chuck got, uh, actually, what is the crime? <coughs> Excuse me. What is the crime? Said 15. That's pretty close. So I think the next page it'll say. All right. Hourly rate. $350 blended rate per hour. Estimated hours, 80. Total estimated, 28000 Prior due to service, $14,000. In the event that more hours are required, a proposal will be sent to the client's approved authority. So $14,000 for a week of coherent cyber. I mean, that's crazy. I'm, I guess I'm doing the wrong thing here. Um, so we can see here's the invoice. Um... So they ended up billing two weeks of it. So $28,000. Oh, uh, they had already paid. I guess they had already paid the first amount by the time this invoice was set, sent. So let's see here. Okay, and that's another one. That's We're going to jump the gun there. Let's see if I can find more on this first go around. Okay, I guess this is the same contract twice. Vicki Wallace, who is the finance director, said, Joe, did you check for historically underutilized business hub vendors for the 14000 expenditure? Uh, probably no, Joe did it because Joe wants to hire his buddies to do his political smear jobs, his political hits, his drive-bys. If yes, please send us documented to attach the check for the auditor. Okay, I think whatever they're trying to say there. Okay, da, 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 da. I thought there was another thing on the 14, but let's see. Here's one of the checks. They sent on 1126 was the first check. And I guess that is all of the information. So that's all the information that they gave me about that first thing uh, they just they just simply didn't turn documents over now i know from other open records requests and and other sources that this what they did what joe did he was trying to take out josh stevens and josh was one of the main organizers of the change leon valley project and joe used them uh coherent cyber to uh, go to the grand jury and go through Josh's uh, online accounts uh, and did search warrants were literally here. I can actually find it uh, since this is document dump. I all get a special treat. I get lots of good stuff here today. Okay. Where is it? Wix. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Hopefully there's no. Okay, so he went and got these search warrants, which I'll put on in a second. I just want to make sure there's no addresses or anything. So he went to the um, Texas Rangers. Okay, I think I'm. I think I can. I can show it. So he says, leaked documents continue to surface on the activist website. That's Change Leon Valley. Um, see, we see flashback data. And this is weird. Who, who is flashback data? They were the subcontractor. Uh, so I guess Coherent Cyber contracted out a subcontractor. Flashback data, I guess, is what it seems. So... Anyhow, they, they use this um, to, to do all that, but where it gets really good somewhere. Um, he is so mad that, that these documents were posted on Change Leon Valley. You know, the like I said, there are documents. They belong to us. It's public information, but Savaggio wants to illegally uh, keep information secret. And it's not just me saying that. I have multiple determinations from the Attorney General and even the Bear County District Attorney, that Savaggio and his gang have violated the Open Records Act. So it's not just me calling them government criminals. Uh, the government itself called them government criminals. So um, where is... 
a really key part. Maybe it's further up here. Wherever he defines what activist is. So these documents were posted on a known city of Leon Valley activist site, changeleonvalley.com. Yeah, here it is. I love this. Like you, you would think that this would make a judge literally take their their foot and and kick out these officers from their office. They wrote Joe's officers said in this affidavit. These documents were posted on a known City of Leon Valley activist site, changeleonvalley.com, activist, wherein the city and police leadership have been openly criticized. So on this website, the police leadership have been openly criticized. See, it's not just me saying that Joe goes after, weaponizes the critical, I mean, weaponizes the criminal justice system, which he cries so much about in his wine letters, uh, to go after his political uh, uh, critics, his critics. I mean, he he puts it right here in the in the court documents. I mean, it's they're literally going after the people who are critical of the city and the police leadership, and they use this coherent. Oh, and I'll say. The only reason I got this is because the city gave it to Joe, but more on that in a bit. So Joe hired this outfit for $28,000 so he, should, he could take out Josh, he could shut down Changely on Valley. This is Coherent Cyber is Joe's political weapon. Joe's political weapon. And um, after he used it on Josh to get all those warrants and whatever... Uh, uh, get all that information, which he then would use not for law enforcement purposes. Well, yeah, he whined to the Texas Rangers. He did do that. But he would use the information. Joe used information he obtained via the grand jury for politics. Let me let, let this sink in. The grand jury proceedings are, are supposed to be secret. They're supposed to be secret so you can uh, go after corrupt government officials. Uh, but nevertheless, they're secret, yet Joe would use the grand jury and get information and then use that information for his political purposes. Joe has not been charged with any crimes. In fact, Joe is intending to sue Leon Valley. Joe has faced no punishment at all. He did get fired, but that wasn't even for cause. He was just fired because at-will employees can simply be hired. And Audi Tyler G, welcome to the high five. Thanks for being a channel member. Um, he did it again. He hired Coherent Cyber again, this time to try to take me out. And these are all kind of out of order. But we see right here, and there's no, they didn't send me a contract for this one. Um, I, I, I think they're playing a lot of open records games. So we'll get to that also in a second. So this was date... October 5th, 2020. Now let's go to Pacer real quick. Pacer Western District of Texas. And guys, if y'all aren't on Pacer, you probably ought to check out Pacer. Pacer is where the federal court documents are shown. So, actually, I'm going to log in before I put that on the screen, if that's okay with y'all. Okay, so this is Pacer, where you look up government stuff, and that may actually be the right case there. So, we're going to see, and that is not, that's the Denise's lawsuit. Okay, so we're going to go down here, and we're going to search by... Last name, Salvaggio, and see how many, and this all costs 10 cents per page, by the way. Everything the government can do to, you see, that was another 10 cents. Here goes another 10 cents. Everything the government can do to hide and make it difficult to access public information. They do. All right, Bradshaw v. Savaggio. Let's go to the docket report right here, and let's have the oldest state first. Sounds good. 
Da, 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 da. Let's see what happened. October. Let's see. So October 1st. Lawsuit filed. Motion for temporary restraining order. Case assigned to Fred Byrie. Summons issued on the 2nd. Oh, okay, no, that's to have extra page. Let's see. Here we go. October 2nd. October 2nd. We have here order granting TRO. And we'll download it again for another 20 cents because, hey, apparently we don't pay enough income taxes. So on October 2nd, the federal court issued a temporary restraining order. Oh, okay, so let's read kind of this. So uh, Solomon Radner, who represented uh, Bradshaw after I helped connect the two, uh, said that the defendants are working in concert to remove him from his duly elected city council pos position. Plaintiff alleges... Plaintiff alleges defendants have retaliated against him for engaging in protected conduct under the First Amendment, violated his substantive and procedural due process rights guaranteed by the 14th Amendment and Texas Constitution, and deprived him of his civil rights under 42 U.S.C. 1983. Uh, da, 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 da. It is ordered that the uh, motion for temporary restraining order is granted such that defendants in their individual and official capacities are temporarily restrained from taking any action to remove plaintiff Will Bradshaw from office. So they can um, you know, do anything else, but they just can't remove him from office. And that was on October 2nd. Also, uh, this is also when... Uh, also, 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 at least I'm not saying um and you know. So, hey, and ah, uh, so that's pretty good. So, we'll take a few also's. Also, if you look up on how they went after Josh Stevens and Josh Stevens' criminal charges, uh, Slavagio started pushing that uh, in mid-October, too. Beginning of October, I guess, really. So, we see just as soon as he found out that Bradshaw wasn't going to be kicked off, he needed to shut me down. So he hired Coherent Cyber for $3,000 initially to perform third-party analysis of Zoom bombing incident during city council meeting on April 7th, 2020. They call this investigation on denial of services. So again, this happened on April, the fourth month, fourth month of the year, yet he waited six months to do this because it's not about justice or anything like that are well according to him his police department and the feds looked into it and couldn't get anywhere so i guess he had to settle for a private investigator to do a political hit at that point but savaggio waited until his power was slipping away till it was clear that they weren't going to be able to kick bradshaw off the council so he desperately needed the recall to fail and josh to lose uh so he is going to come after me. And on October 5th, he did another hit against me. And this was an, a kind of an urgent deal. It was a tight turnaround. Um, because I believe the next day may have been the meeting. Let me go pull that up on the server. Let's see what was going on on October 5th or thereabout. Yes, the the sixth was the council meeting. Uh, See, I'm find a video of that. Pretty pretty regularly, and you have some people that are waiting to play as well. So that it is when the weather's nice, you'll get people out there mm -hmm. just wanting to play. Mm -hmm. I just want to clarify that. Okay. Close this down. So once they come up and open it up for everybody. Then... So here's the biggest change. 
Uh, okay, in, that is in, not the part uh, of the meeting, and maybe this spot right here. I think it's this spot right mm -hmm. here. Unfortunately, those were uh, investigated. I spoke, or uh, as I said, yeah, yeah I, this I just, is it. It, it just it's the from controlling this session for. So that guy up there is the Jacob guy who they hired. So they hired him, I guess, on a Monday and then say, hey, you got to do this, I guess, overnight. And on Tuesday, you're going to pre present it at the council meeting. And I'll have a video uploaded with all this. I still need, I'm still working on catching up uh, on all this stuff. I'll upload this full video sometime where they tried to take me out at the council meeting. So uh, they have an invoice for $300 here. Security consultation, Leon Valley City Council meeting report briefing via go to meeting. One hour, $300, $300 there. That was billed on the following day, uh, the, the, the day of the meeting. And many of y'all probably remember where he tried to take me out there. And let's see. Oh, here's something about the 14th out. So this is all a little out of order. Uh, I guess I could have reorganized the pages. This is how it came from the city. So we're jumping back here to the one on Josh. And it says right down here, this was done while I was on vacation. And I guess that's Kelly. I don't know. So someone's in, you can see right here, authorized by Joe Savaggio. So Joe Savaggio cut that check uh, for the... 14,000 against Josh to get that rolling. Here is the one on the hit on me in October, right before the election, you know, just a week or so before early voting started, doing everything that he can to try to uh, hurt our credibility and win the election. You can see Joe also signed that one. All right, but here is where it gets even more interesting. We have right here, invoice amended, also signed by Joe, for $600. And we see an invoice right here. It says 900 but 300 and 600 So there's com some confusion about this. And let's read this email chain here. So on January 14th uh, of this year, uh, one of the coherent people, Nicholas Hollis, says, Dear Miss Wallace, please find attached coherent cyber invoices 1083 and 84. 1084 dated 10-6-2020 and 10-21-2020, totaling, and then that's not the right dates. Anyhow, totaling $3,900. Thank you for partial payment of $3,300, blah, 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 received on 1026. Is there an issue with the outstanding balance or the work product delivered, please? We are working towards closing our books for 2020, and your assistance would be greatly appreciated. Vicky says, well, we sent the invoice to the police, and they processed it. So not a question I can answer. I will forward it. I will forward your email to them. Wonderful. The finance director can't even answer a question about uh, the expenditures of the city. That's effing awesome. That's effing awesome. Not. All right. Vicky says to Joe, please say below. Then it gets put into... David Gonzalez, then uh, little Republican boy Anderson, puny Republican boy Anderson. And then Anderson says, please see the attached uh, DO. I, I guess that, what is DO? Is that the direct order? They call that DO is for direct order. I guess that's too hard to type out. And invoice, invoice 1084 for $1,600. Oh no, the, this is different. That's different. That is different. Apparently, uh, we'll get to that one. That's another one that just has my mind blown. But it says, apparently, Jacob never received the check. He is checking again with his accounting folks. Can we see if this check was cash? Thanks. Nicholas, the attached invoice 1084 shows a payment due of 300 which we paid. Why does your new invoice 1084 show 900 due? If the invoice was modified after a payment was made, we really need a new invoice and justification why. Thanks. Wait, so they modified an invoice after it was paid. That's very interesting. That's very interesting. So let's get to that invoice. Let's see, I have one of them already up on the side here. That's the $600 one. 
and let's get to the $300 one here. All right, so here are both of these invoices that they did. Hopefully y'all can see it all on the screen. The one on this side, the right, is the first one they did. The one on the other side, on the left, is the second invoice. And I've highlighted the difference between the two invoices. So if it's not yellow, that means it was identical. Same invoice number, 1084. Same date, 10-6-2020. Due date, 10-21-1021. I, I mean, I, you, you can't, uh, can I do another color here? I need to do another color. Highlight text and other color comment. Let's change our text tool to red because it is a red flag. All right. It, it claims to be the same invoice number and was sent on 10 6 2020 that's clearly a lie clearly a lie and i don't know what exact statutes this violates but it sure does look fraudulent to me uh you know but when you're doing political hits with public funds i guess fraud is one of the least of your worries uh, but they initially under the same date and invoice number billed for one hour which was Plenty generous for how long he presented. One hour at 300, but then they later, basically, here's how it works. Well, let me let me go back through the um, email chain here that we were on. So they email it back, and this Nick guy with Coherent Cyber says, Frank, I see the problem here. There was an amendment to invoice 1084, sent from our system. Jacob was told to increase the hours charged from 1 to 3 for the report and meeting. You correctly paid the unamended 1084 invoice you had at 300. That leaves the balance of 600 due on the amended 1084 invoice I sent you yesterday and is reattached here. Apologies for the confusion. Nick. I'm just going to pause there and let y'all chat what y'all think about this before I get on this. So what happened is that Leon Valley paid these contractors, these political hit contractors, who apparently will do anything for a quick buck. They paid these guys, they paid them $3,300, but that wasn't enough for a political hit contractor. Political hit contractor came back and wanted $600 more, and they, they basically faked an invoice. They put the same date, the same number on it, when that invoice had already existed, and they sure as heck didn't send that invoice on 10-6. How do I know? Because they they acknowledge that there was already a $300 payment, and the payment wasn't sent until, let's see, we can find that too. I know exactly when the $3,300 was paid. $3,300, 10-13, very promptly paid on 10-13. Yet they're sending an invoice. They claim that this invoice, they claim this invoice was sent on October 6, 2020. Clearly it wasn't. It wasn't sent until January 15th, when they came back and wanted more money. They, they, they invoiced, they got paid, they decided they wanted more money for what I don't know. They didn't spend three hours presenting. 
they just come back and 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 and, and I don't even know what to call it. Double bill. It's kind of like what uh, doctors get in trouble for with Medicare and Medicaid sometimes. Frivolous billing. And fortunately, uh, Frank Messick and Vicky were somewhat alert enough to be like, what? No, we're not just paying this. Um, but what do y'all think? Did they pay it or not? What, what do y'all think happened? What do y'all think happened? Rights on says that's an upcharge. Do y'all think they paid it? Well, the answer is, yes, they did pay it right here. You can see where Joe Savaggio signed off on it and um, put invoice date as 1-14-21. That's interesting. Um, you know, the whatever the paperwork says, right? And um, yeah, there you go. Joe paid it, the last $600. So, you know, I'm sitting here paying tons of time to the city, to attorneys, uh, to just mailing complaints, everything, nonstop to try to get a little bit of transparency. But if you want to align with the government, the, the people in power, if you want to align with them, you will get $300, $350 an hour, whether you work or not. And like, if that's not enough money, you just send a new effing invoice and they'll pay that too. If you're a resigned city manager and you want your attorney bills paid, just email it and they'll freaking pay your bills. If you're on the corrupt government team, they will pay anything you want. But if you dare follow the law and legally go to expose and replace the corrupt government criminals, they misuse the criminal justice system, they do everything they can do to attack you and smear you, and the government lets them get away with it. No charges, no investigations, no jail time, nada. If you think you're in a free state or free country, you're kidding yourself. It is time to stand up and do something about this vile corruption. I need you to get involved in your local communities and flush out the evil. Just like Justin Corner did in Eastland County and Ranger. That needs to happen everywhere. And yeah, I'm fired up because this is corrupt. It's public funds used for malicious purposes. And apparently $3,300 wasn't enough when they wanted the extra icing on the cake. Joe said, sure, here you go. Totally corrupt. Totally corrupt. Totally corrupt. Trying to pass it off like the city didn't do it or whatever. Dude, they, they literally faked an invoice. They literally faked an invoice. And, and the Frank guy said, well, you need to issue it you know, different as amended. Here, I have it up right here. Does this look amended? Does it say amended? Does it have an updated date on it? No. They faked the freaking invoice. They faked the freaking invoice. All right. There's more. There's more. That's not the only time they've used coherent cyber, and this last one really leaves me scratching my head. Right here. More recently. December. December 16th. 2020, December 16th, 2020 is the date, but then the date for the work says 10-15, 2020, which was a little after, you know, a week or two after that council meeting. And it says activity, general services, general consulting, copy six to eight terabytes of evidence to two larger external hard drives, four hours rate. $200, $800 total, plus equipment purchase, two 10 terabyte USB 3.0 hard drives at $300 a piece for $600. So 
So sometime in October or December or sometime before Kelly was out the door, they copied over six to eight terabytes of evidence. Now, I have no clue what this could be. Um, that's I know that's can't be like that. That's not that's too large of an amount for what they seized on uh, Miller's stuff and the stuff they seized from everyone. It doesn't add up to six to eight terabytes. Um, it, it can't be just my Google stuff because my that doesn't. Um, that there, there's only one thing of mine that I can think of, um, that if it's mine, that would even add up to that. So whether it's everyone's Google accounts, like from anyone who ran for election or questioned Savaggio or filmed the police, it's some sort of evidence. Six to eight terabytes is a lot of data, guys. That's a lot of data. Uh, so I, I don't know if it's all of the... Uh, YouTubers, Google account datas, and YouTube datas, my stuff, Josh's stuff. Who knows? I don't know. All I do know is that there's six to eight terabytes of information that they did not turn over for this. And again, that was another fourteen hundred dollars. You know, they make <laughs> they make eight hundred dollars just copying files. That's crazy to me. That's crazy to me. You know, we can see the summary here. And um, so, yeah, for my open records request, I did get a lot of um, good financial documents. And, you know, I'll, well, why did I get that? You know, how did I actually get that? And do y'all see it on? Put in the chat if you know why I actually got those documents. Put in the chat if you know why. So at the bottom, you can see right down down there, see Caldera. It's because uh, city, assistant city manager Caldera got those documents. Those are what were, were under her purview. So she she pulled all of that stuff out of this uh, system here, vendor management. And we can add it up, what, 600, 2,000, uh, 5,300 plus 28,000. So they've paid this uh, company about $33,000, $34,000. Uh, to do these political hit jobs. That's crazy, guys. Totally crazy. Totally crazy. So this isn't about justice. This isn't about legitimate law enforcement. This is about using the public resources weaponizing the criminal justice system to go after the people who ask questions about what you're doing, who criticize you, who are working to remove you and to replace your buddies in the government. And they abuse the resources to try to protect the incumbents and take out the challengers. And again, my next video upload will touch on other ways that the government officials and the police do the same. Uh, so thank you, uh, Dr. Caldera, for getting the financial information that I requested, and that is about all they request they provided for my request. Um, I have a few more pages, and I'll show you what the request is, because, hey, people want to know how to request information. So this is a report from September 17th. Um, do y'all want to see the lie report first, or do y'all want to see what really happened first? Uh, put a one if you want to see the lie report first, and two if you want to see what really happened first. So let me know what you want to do. So uh, one was lie report, right? Yeah. So this is September seventeenth at an ethics by uh, an ethics uh, committee hearing or meeting at City Hall. It says ordinance violation. Reporty Azar, you know, the one I showed earlier. Uh, oh, they have the right to be filming. Get out, get out. Um, so she's the reporty, and the involved is Justin Pulliam. Okay, so we're going to do the lie report first. Okay. So it says that on September 17th, 2020, Officer Azar... So she she's running in herself in third person. Oh. Well, no, she changes to first person later on. Okay. 
Officer Azar was on duty providing security at 6400 El Verde at the Leon Valley City Hall for an ethics meeting. Wait, what? Whoa. Hold on. Mind blown. One second. They just said that 6400 El Verde was Leon Valley City Hall. What? What are they talking about? What are they talking about? 6400 El Verde? What? No, that can't be it. That can't be it. That can't be it. If I can find this document, where is the document I'm looking for here? Did those lies not even send the warrant there? They are such bad government people. You know, they are really bad government people. Did I ever tell y'all how bad of government people these people are? Wow. Wow. They will not do anything right. Won't even give over proper public information. I guess it's from the mainstream establishment media letting them get away with it for so long. All right, let's see. I think I have this video somewhere else. All right, here, from the district clerk, since the police department won't give it over. So I'm pretty sure... Right here, that 6400 El Verde is the Leon Valley Municipal Court Facility. See, it says the Leon Valley Municipal Court. Leon Valley Municipal Court. Very interesting. But see, here Azar is saying that it's Leon Valley City Hall. At 6400. So which is it? You know, I think it actually is a city hall. Now that I think about it, it is the city hall, not municipal court. And if you tried to call it municipal court to get a hired judge for the city of San Antonio to sign off on your little lie report, then you're probably a blue liar. So sure enough, 6400 El Verde is Leon Valley City Hall, and it was for an ethics meeting. O1, which is other one, which is Justin Pulliam, was observed to take off his while inside of City Hall chambers. Justin was contacted and advised he needed to put his as required due to coconut restrictions. O1 refused to put on his, stating he was broadcasting and did not need to wear it while broadcasting. I gave O1 a warning that if he did not place his back on, he would be asked to leave and would be cited. Pretty confident she didn't say that, but we'll get the, the true, true story here in a second. O1, after several warnings, complied by putting his back on. O1 has received numerous warnings in the past for this same violation. Well, that sounds like a blue lie. O1 violated... Oh, man. Double double violating. Guys, I, I, I violated squared. O1 violated violating Governor's Emergency Order GA-28 and Bear County Executive Order NW-12. Let's watch what really happened. How about that? Does that sound okay? Let's see what really happened here. Well, that they also, well, it's attorney-client privilege information. Which so I have a, a cameraman here filming me as I broadcast. There are hundreds of people watching, and the camera can't even find me. It screws up the algorithms. You can see it's all out of focus. It's like focused on the, the door behind me. Under the city charter says that it's confidential until they do a two-thirds vote, as I was explaining up there. And um, 
The um, so they said that the mayor did the same thing. That I'm, I'm broadcasting. I'm broadcasting right now. I'm broadcasting right now. That's exempt under the government code. Uh, I'm putting it on, but it's exempt. It's exempt. But y'all do whatever you want. You do whatever you want. Okay, and um, so I copied over the first um governor's order about the order, and it says um, provided, however, that this requirement does not apply to the following. And number ten says any person. While the person is giving a speech for a broadcast or to an audience. So, which I clearly was doing, and if y'all followed along with the meetings, it had always been the practice at Leon Valley meetings that if you're giving, you know, addressing the people, if you're talking at the meeting, you removed it. That's how it always went. Now, that wasn't just me. That was for everyone, and certainly I was broadcasting there. So even under the original one, I, it clearly it, it does not apply, right? But Azar. And I also want to point out this whole thing lasted, let's see. Um, so that the mayor did the same thing. So at 20 seconds, she starts talking, blah, 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 blah. That I'm under the gun, but it's exempt. And in less than 15 seconds, I was already doing that. So. I was immediately compliant, right? But she says, let's see, if you had to believe her, uh, that um, after several warnings, after several warnings, and it received numerous... So if you believe their lie report, I'm some sort of, you know, a coconut criminal or whatever. Uh, but if you see what happened, number one, I, you know... I wasn't doing anything wrong, but hey, you know, because she's so unpleasant, you just you just give in to them sometimes because they're so unpleasant. I was trying to, what this was, I was at a meeting where I was trying to show how the establishment people uh, violated the law, uh, but they just canceled the hearing, basically. That's a story for another time, but I, I need, I was part of this, hopefully going to be part of this meeting, so I... I needed to be there, and you can't stop and kick every barking dog. Um, but let's watch the whole thing again throughout, and tell me if she ever says anything in here about citing me, because I didn't hear that. Oh. That they also, well, it's attorney-client privilege and information, which under the city charter says that it's confidential until they do a two-thirds vote, as I was explaining up there. And um, the... Um, So they said that the mayor did the same thing. That I'm, I'm broadcasting. I'm broadcasting right now. I'm broadcasting right now. That's exempt under the government code. Uh, I'm putting it on, but it's exempt. It's exempt. But y'all do whatever you want. You do whatever you want. We film that too. Film that stuff. This is ridiculous. Sorry guys, y'all aren't gonna be able to hear me because they like violating the law. They just do whatever they want here. Oh, that they also... Well, so, I didn't hear anything about getting cited. Did, did y'all let me know? Put, you know, a cited or whatever in the chat if you heard that. I didn't. So, let's also look at here. She said that I violated squared governor's emergency order GA-28. Are y'all ready to see what governor's emergency order GA-28 says? Y'all want to see that? Maybe it was supposed to be like violated, divided by violated, because that would be like, that would be like, it would cancel it out, right? Maybe that's what she meant. Was there supposed to be a dash right there? That's probably what it was supposed to be. Little dash. Oh, no, I don't want to add a signature. What did I get into here? All right, let's go look at this order. I have, I, I conveniently have that up right here. Okay, so here's GA executive order uh 28 it says paragraph 15 individuals are encouraged to wear appropriate coverings but no jurisdiction can impose a civil or criminal penalty for failure to wear a covering 
Wait, what did this just say? Oh, it said, no jurisdiction can impose a civil or criminal penalty. Oh, that's what the law said. Okay, let's add like time number umpteen million that officer frickin' Pat violated my rights. Non-stop. Non-stop. Golly, she probably needs to be sued, doesn't she? Along with Joe and Kelly, Hody, Matthew Hody. Man, I'm thinking about it. They might need to be sued. Man. Wow. So that's the law right there. Justin. Law abiding. Blue lion thug. Government criminal thug. Go figure. That's how it goes, isn't it? But they want to shut you down. They want to harass and intimidate. But hey, this was such a major crime. A major crime that we even got a supplement report. Andy Grego, Catherine's good buddy, said on 9-17-20... Oh, at the exact time here. We got the exact time. At 18-23 hours, I was in the city council chambers providing general security for the ethics meeting at 6400 El Verde. Which, mind you, so we saw Azar and that Tackard guy outside in the hall. So they had at least three cops at this ethics meeting. I think Joe was running it. So they had like four plus cops at this meeting, which is insane in itself. So they were at the, the ethics meeting at 6400 El Verde Road when he observed O1 remove his as he spoke to another person. I love it. As he spoke to another person. <laughs> oh, they're liars. They're such freaking liars, aren't they? As he spoke to another person. Officer Azar entered the room and advised Owen that he needed to put on his. Owen began debating the issue with the officer, and she had to tell him numerous times to put the on our leave. Now, no, notice he didn't say anything about citation either. I don't think she said that. Anyhow, Owen reluctantly put his on. Mind you, I, immediately, uh, immediately... I mean, immediately, they act like, you know, you just, as, as soon as she did it, I was putting, going to put it on with all my stuff in my hands while telling her that she was wrong. But, you know, they, they, they paint the picture like you're a coconut criminal. No further action taken. Well, they, you know, that was probably good on your part, man. You probably, you probably dodged a bullet there, um, staying out of that one. So uh, I think he may have actually been in the room, come to think of it. So probably a good idea not involving yourself in that one. So yeah, there's Azar stuff. Um, man, these blue liars. What was I thinking? I thought about something else, but I can't remember now. Oh, well, I can't remember what else I was going to say. Oh, yeah, he was saying like, oh, I was talking to another, you know, they, they know I'm on YouTube. How do they know? How do I know they know I'm on YouTube? It was just, I was, it was the next page. I just had to go down the next, the next, the next page. <laughs> because, you know, this is what we get, guy. <laughs> this is what we get. Um, so we look up at the top left. You see where it says FirstNet? So FirstNet is the separate cellular uh, network for the first responders for the police. So the government can shut down consumer networks and allow the police to still be able to talk and hog all of the bandwidth and always have good bandwidth to do whatever tyrannical things that they're doing. AT&T got the contract, cost an absolute ton of money. Uh, why the government needs a separate cellular network? It doesn't, but it's just a way where they can turn us off and you know hog the bandwidth and make sure that tyranny always is is you know prioritized in america like like make, make no mistake in texas and america corruption is prioritized tyranny is prioritized over honest ethical work and law-abiding people like that that's the sad reality is criminal activity 
and tyranny is prioritized above the hardworking ethical people of this country. Uh, so we can see this individual is using FirstNet. And hey, you know, I guess every view helps, you know, pay the bills or whatever. Uh, but this this police officer here, which police officer do y'all think it is, by the way? This police officer is using FirstNet to watch Justin Pulliam live. And um, there's screenshots of what do we have here? A comment by Josh Stevens. <laughs> I love it. He's like, take... <laughs> look at the time this took. You can see how long of a reader it took him. It took him three minutes to read the comment. Oh, man. <laughs> As he reads it, he... Con he oh, man. Does a screenshot. He almost ran out of um, battery there, too. See that first net up there? First net. LTE. Um, yeah, so there we have those. This is also part of the open records request, and it was from Joe. If y'all didn't guess that, I'm going to spoil it. So Joe says, and this is to Hank Brummett, you know, the guy who, who had to quit because the, the water pipe burst at the cabin or whatever. He is he what he can he didn't have it in him to fire Joe. Joe needed to go, but he wasn't gonna do it. Um Joe says, Sir. I'm surprised you can't call him Colonel there. Sir, this is the post that Counselor Josh Stevens put on Justin Pulliam's YouTube account, Justin Pulliam Live, covering the council meeting on January nineteenth, twenty twenty one. These comments and others he discusses are open records that should be maintained. Very respectfully, Chief Savaggio. And, let's get into Excel. So, Savaggio is taking these screenshots because he wants to do a setup on Josh. He wants to lay behind the log and file criminal charges on Josh once and once and once over again. That's what Joe does all the time, all the time, all the time. All right, let's find Joe Savaggio's request here. Oh, you know what? It may not actually be in this file. Hold on, let me find it. Joe's request. Joe communications with staff, originals, da -da -da, email attachments. Emails part two. No, it's not in that. All emails redacted, I think. 175 police shootings in Maine since 1990. 100% rule justified. No investigations. That is corruption. Yeah, wow. Wow, and thank you, Springer, for the uh, super chat there. All right, hold on. I'm trying to find Joe's little... What is that? Is it WhatsApp? What is the... I don't know. Facebook. Maybe Facebook will find it. Okay, here we go. Trying to find a request here. One moment, guys. One moment, one moment. It's the same request. I don't want, I want the other request. I want the other request. Where's the other request? I know it's in there somewhere. Okay, well, I can't find it, um, so we're going to just have to settle with this one. 
But basically, he did a, a request similar to this, where he asked for all of their like app messages and YouTube uh, comments written by any city official. And you can see here, this includes private personal correspondence on all types of media. Like, like obviously, he's not entitled to their private correspondence. Uh, he did a separate request like that later on as well. Um, so I can't find the 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 word uh, the um that one yet, but it was along the same lines as that. I think y'all get it. And here he's he's complaining that um he doesn't think he should have to go to this and and he wants these documents and these posts in in right here. You might also remind him of his public comments and interviews both during city council meetings as well as during the ethics hearing as well as interviews he has given, which he is required to make copies of per the law, respectfully, Joe. So, I mean, Josh wasn't even uh, on, the, on the government during the ethics, uh, the act, ethics hearing. But you can see here, Savaggio took those screenshots. He's trying to set Joe, uh, uh, Josh up. No telling he's whined to probably the DA, the Attorney General, the FBI. No telling who all he's whined. But you can see that that stuff that I sent you, those screenshots in this other email, is how Joe lays behind the logs and says, see, these comments and, other he and others he discusses are open records that should be maintained. And you can see where he whines about it later on. So you see his game. Uh, and, and, and again, he's asking, he literally requested private personal communications. Open records only reaches to official communications. It doesn't reach to private information. But Joe just wants it all. And I guess he, he's mad that he can't just go and download all of our stuff from Google anymore and go through our emails and whatever else. So, um, I think that's it. Oh, and then there was one other email. So they gave me two emails and this was just an email I sent to, uh, police chief Gonzalez asking for an interview, which of course he ignored and never replied and all that. All right. So how long are we into this stream? Oh man. All right. Over an hour. Here's what I asked for. If y'all want to ask for a request, you know, you can use this template for other matters or, you know, whatever. How to do emails, how to get warrants and incident reports. So item one was all police incident reports, complete investigative files, warrants, warrant affidavits, warrant returns relating to Justin Pulliam. And it's, they sent me that one incident report about the thing with Azar. All right, number two. All emails, including attachments, sent or received by any police department employee, including former employees, relating to Justin Pulliam. All right, so item two, all emails sent or received by the police department. Yeah, pretty big request. Yeah, I, I intended it to be comprehensive. Now, we've seen that they turned over just two emails, this email from Gonzalez and this email from Joe. So two different emails is all they turned over. I know there's much more. Now some, oh, Justin, Justin, how do you know there's more? Maybe that's all there is, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I want you all to see the date here. I submitted this request on Tuesday, October 26th, 2021. All right, y'all got that date down? Let's see right here. This is another thing I got from the city on the same date, October 26th, 2021. All right, here in the search, I have Pulliam. Okay, let's see right here. Oh, wait here. Here's an email sent to Joe Savaggio about Mr. Pulliam. Let's see. Let's keep going. Oh, wait, another one. And another. And another. And another. And another. Oh my gosh, all of the, this one even says my name in the subject line. These sent, received by Savaggio. And again, 
I received this on October 26th, the same exact date I requested this information. So I know they have more emails. And I know they had them when I made the request. They're playing an open records game. Let's go down to item three. All emails, including attachments, sent to or received from Jacob Stauffer are coherent cyber. They sent me one email thread, is it? And that was with the finance department, nothing with the police department. They just blew off item three altogether. Totally blew it off. Number four, all contracts, invoices, and payment. They did a decent job on that, although I'm missing a couple of check stubs. And there was no contract for our work statement for the other two items. So maybe they just did it without anything. It was on the phone. Who knows? But, but I mean, let's, this is a good point. Like they paid these guys 33, well, $3,900 actually. They paid these guys $3,900 on this right here. You see right here, $3,900, $3,900. And I have no documents, no contract, no agreement, no emails, no memo, no letter. There's literally no documentation about what this $3,900 expenditure is, except for what they put here in the invoice. They're, they're playing, they're government criminals who need to be prohibited from public service for life. They're playing games. They they didn't give me they did not give me what I asked for. And again, number five, all reports unredacted produced by Co- Coherent Cyber, and they didn't give any of the reports either. And uh, Joe stood up. Well, actually, part of that meeting in that video that I was playing a minute ago. Don't take my word for it. Oh, there's little Joe. Thinking he's so cute, so proud of himself. Or any other threat actors. Um, uh, unfortunately, like I said, due to the limited number of evidence or the limited amount of evidence, um, we were not able to determine where, or where the attack came from. Uh, and this is one of the problems that, uh, that platforms like GoToMeeting. So he's literally reading from the report right there. And Joe stood up in the meeting and said, I have the report and I'll send it out to you. And He may have sent it to the others. He hadn't sent it to Bradshaw. Bradshaw said he never got it. So we know there's a report. He's sitting there reading the report. Joe said there was a report. They just didn't even send it to me. This Prowlis guy, uh, who in Prowlis is the former assistant city manager in Arlington, Texas, over the police department, uh, News Now Community, just um, posted a video the other day, or it may have been this morning, about the Arlington Police Department. News Now Community's video is very representative of the uh, misconduct and abhorrent behavior of the Arlington police officers. Very bad department. Very, very bad. Uh, This Prowlis guy is total government thug. He, if he, if you're not on his team, if you're not on the big government city manager dictator team, he just blows you off. Uh, And there's so many things that the council told him to issue the certificate of occupancy to the um, to the uh, aquarium, wouldn't do it. He's, they said, hey, issue an RFQ for new attorneys. He won't do it. He keeps working with his, att- and, and by the way, Denton Navarro, his attorney pals are the ones doing this as well. Um, right here, these Denton Navarro attorney chicks. Right there. Uh, they, they just don't care because they're never held accountable they should be convicted and jailed and be found of official misconduct for this repetitive, repetitive things that they do. They keep doing these same violations over and over and over again. But because they're never held accountable, they just keep doing it. And I can't respect these people at all. And I don't respect them. Um, and you certainly can't trust them. You certainly can't trust them. So they replied with a 10-day letter, which, you know, they're so, they, they, they have these, you know, like uh, jargon, if you want to call it, I guess, but like 10-day letter and 15-day letter, it's not even really the jargon. It's just made up 
colloquial type terminology. So they just throw down literally every exception. Yeah, look at this. Everything they say, oh, we're going to withhold it under this, blah, blah, blah. Just everything. Now that's illegal. The law specifically states that you can only raise an exception uh, that you reasonably believe applies. And they're going to have a really hard time arguing how all these reasonably apply. But again, the city attorneys keep doing this because the attorney general lets them do it. And no city attorney, to my knowledge, has ever faced uh, a, a conviction for open records violations. So they keep playing the open, the illegal open records games. Uh, then they sent the 10 day letter. Oh, by the way, this they never even sent to me. They sent it to Jake Pulliam and, and Jake Pulliam told them how dumb they were and they never even sent it to me. But fortunately Jake sent it to me. Um, attorney chicks, totally worthless, totally freaking worthless. Okay, so here's where they argue and they claim, oh, we gave out some of it and we want uh, you to let us withhold it, some of it. Page display, enable scrolling. All right, so they claim regarding items two, three, four, and five, the documents will be released to the requester, which clearly they didn't give me anything for item five. They didn't give me, they only gave me um, two emails, which is hardly it everything they gave me one item for item three and probably a lot of the stuff for item four but i think there's probably still stuff for item four that exists regarding item one which was the incident report they say there are two incident reports that are responsive only one incident report is attached as exhibit d for attorney general review as the city believes this document in its entirety should be accepted from disclosure based on the below exceptions and then they raise special circumstances Special circumstances, uh, I guess that means when your political opponent is about to expose you engaging in political hits when you're weaponizing the police department and you want to try to keep your government secrets, I guess that's a special circumstances. Special circumstance. Uh, special circumstances refers to a very narrow set of situations in which the release of information would likely cause someone to face, quote, an imminent threat of physical danger, unquote. The Supreme Court adopted the standard enunciated in Section 552.152, requiring the withholding of information if disclosure would create, quote, substantial threat of physical harm. Now, that's not a blue lie. So I have no idea what this is even about, but they claim Exhibit D, a threat of physical harm was made against the victim at her residence and workplace. Hmm. And they say release would put that person in imminent threat of physical danger. And that's not it. If that wasn't enough, they also raise the informer's privilege, which is can be waived. I mean, that's, that's not even a mandatory exception. But anyhow, this is an open records game. They say in this instance, the city feels the victim did report a possible violation of law, as shown in Exhibit D. And the, the victim made... The report to officials charged with the duty of enforcing the law, the Leon Valley Police Department. Therefore, the city is requesting that the information be accepted from disclosure pursuant to sections 552.101 of the Act. And then they also want to withhold it under 552.108. They claim that it was, let's see, information that deals with the detected, detection investigation or prosecution of a crime only in relation to an investigation that did not result in conviction or deferred adjudication and also the internal record or notation so i guess it was bogus because you can see here i'm free i'm not beneath the jail and you know they're not saying it's active so it's some frivolous thing i don't know if it's from one of the counselors or or Kelly, or whatever, but we can assume that it's a frivolous, bogus hit piece from one of the government officials that they're trying to desperately keep quiet. But not only that, so they're... Let's see. They claim that release of the records requested will unduly interfere with law enforcement and crime prevention. In this instance, the case did not end in convention, or blah, blah, blah. Okay, so... What they're trying to do, besides hide that individual document, 
They want the attorney general to give them a letter that says, blah, 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 we find that you can withhold this. And then they're going to withhold all this stuff they didn't give me. They're going to use that and say, oh, the attorney general said we could. Well, no, they said you could withhold one incident report, which, you know, I need to fight it. Probably what I'll do um, on my Justin Pulliam IRL channel. Uh, I don't have a link for that. I have a mod if you want to put the channel for Justin Pulliam IRL. Sometime this weekend, I need to do public comments on this and I need to do uh, complaints. I'll do that live on Justin Pulliam IRL probably later on sometime if y'all want to subscribe to that if you're interested. But they, they, they desperately want to hide this incident report. So it must be really bad. Um, so... You know, and, and unless someone lives at the, the, the city hall, I just don't even know how this could be applicable or what if I, I'm, I have no idea what it is. Um, other than that, I assume it's a political hit and they don't only want to hide that. They want to hide the emails. They want to hide the coherent reports. They want to hide the coherent emails. They, they want to hide all that stuff and they want the attorney general to give them this letter. Then they'll act. Well, and they know that, so they, they know that that letter doesn't allow them to do that, but they think they'll be able to fool a judge or a jury or a police officer and claim, oh, we're just, we're just dumb attorney chicks and we try so hard. I'm just Sandra, the lying piece of shit city secretary. And we're just dumb. We're just dumb. You know, we've only violated the law so many times, but we keep doing it because we're so dumb. We're so dumb. We're so incompetent. So they want this stuff so they can claim, well, we requested an attorney general decision and they said we can do this. And it's their whole scheme so they can continue blatantly violating the government club, blatantly violating the law and getting away with it. Drunk man on the laptop. Thank you for joining the high five. Welcome to the channel membership. And yes, absolutely, Sandra needs to be fired and also banned from public service. She's manipulative. She breaks the law. Ugh. And, and honestly, she's she's not she's not smart, and she doesn't even do that much work. So, I mean, come on. At a certain point, like if your job is to do meeting minutes, and the meeting minutes are over a year past due, it's time where you get you need to just be dismissed. Adios. Later. Bye bye. Um. Let's see. So I think I went over everything. Um, hey, I want to know in chat, what do y'all think about the, um, what do y'all think about this document dump idea show? I didn't know it would take an hour and 30 minutes. So we might try to get them down closer to an hour, but Hey, you know, it's the information that's hot off the press. It's not a produced show. It can be a produced show. If y'all would rather have it that way, I can show more to you if I do it live. Uh, is this stuff because to me, like when I get this, I'm like download open. I look through it immediately. And is this stuff that y'all would like to see too? Is this a format where you would like to see the documents and I'll leave you. I'm not going to read this out loud, but I did. I did send this to the city staff. I'm sorry, the city officials. And I think if I open this, I can scoot this over a little bit. Oh, there I scooted it over a few inches. Um, here's an email y'all can read if you want, um, basically explaining, uh, how Joe and uh, continues to play this political hit job on Josh and everyone else. Um, but do y'all like this format? Should I do this every Friday with some recent open records? Let's go through them. Let's see what's there. Um, do it live. Should I do it uploaded? What do y'all think? And it held out a pretty good audience, 250 now, but it was up over 300 little while and we're getting it's already eight o'clock on Friday evening so it's definitely getting late in the evening um, let's see let's see the chat okay so it looks like there is positive reviews here okay all right all right All right, Nan says would like to see more. Maybe some prep organization beforehand, though. Well, you know, I, I did, I did. I had most of this stuff aligned, and that, and that's the thing. Okay, so we can make a decision here and maybe vote. Uh, put a one if you want me to stick to only what I have up, and two if since we're live, you want me to add more stuff into the fold. I thought the stuff I added into the fold was, um, you know, was relevant and useful for y'all. 
Uh, I'm only one person, and a lot of that stuff I came up, you know, I we're live. I hey, this is pertinent. If y'all would rather me not do that, I cannot. But I mean, I won't. But I mean, there's there's only so much. If y'all don't appreciate the amount of work and preparation I've done for this show, uh, then I, I can just stick to uploaded shows, and there will be fewer of them. But that would be the other alternative. So, uh, but it seems like overall everyone really did appreciate this. So I think we'll start doing this every Friday. Maybe I'll, I'll try doing an upload one um, next time. Um, JP and JC says one man band. If I say it's relevant, throw it in. Yes, yeah, so I I I think that this. I hope it does at least paint and show a picture about how Savaggio and the others consistently, not just one time, nonstop, use public funds, use the, the police department as a weapon against their critics, against their political opponents, numerous violations of the law, still not held accountable, not even charges pending, not even investigations, nothing, totally getting away with it. And, you know, I just hope that y'all start getting involved in your communities. That's really, that's really the best thing I think you can do is start getting involved in your communities. I mean, is if more people start pulling records in more places and start filming in more places, it'll be harder and harder and harder for the corruption to hide. Um, I had another question. Are any of y'all on Substack? Y'all know what that is? It's uh, an email uh, list deal where you can like have members on email list. Uh, do are any of y'all on Substack? I've also considered starting a Substack to start sharing some of this because, um, yeah, I can read an email on here or I could simply just forward the email out to the Substack. Would anyone be interested in signing up for my Substack if I made that? See, I don't know. It's I guess Chuck's talking about. Okay, Wake Up America, I think, is on Substack. Okay, but is anyone already on Substack? Will you put like I'm on Substack if you already follow someone on Substack? I'm just trying to get get a understanding of if this is like a common overlap with YouTube or not. If you've if you're if you subscribe to Substack for someone already, will you put like I'm on Substack? I'm just, I'm just curious if it's something that um that people do. Uh, so. I think it would be a little bit of a time commitment, but I think it wouldn't be. So like what I would do, say I got these emails, right? And I probably wouldn't even do the full thing. I'd break this up into like three. I'd be like, hey, you know, I got these text messages and I would post like this with this email here and then be like, hey, this is how Joe is trying to set up Josh. And, you know, again, I think it, this all ties it into a picture, but... Uh, I hope you all appreciate following along. And then I would do a little summary email and send it out. So that's kind of how it would go. So it seems like most people have not. Um, back to the one I was on. Is anyone on Substack? Okay, so it might be a new thing for most of y'all, so I, I might ease into the Substack, but I think I might start doing it. Um, also, if I did a survey and, and kind of like posted it about what viewers like about my YouTube channel about Corruption Report, would any of y'all put a one of you would take my survey? It would be maybe some like ranking things, but mostly like open-ended questions. Um, I think I'm getting more on the target on what viewers would like to see, uh, but I would like to hear from y'all as well. So if I put together a survey, uh, will you put a one of you take the survey? Okay, cool. I'll probably make a survey sometime before the end of the year. I just want to be more on track. Um, I, I think you'll like the new corruption, uh, report, um, model that I'm going after. And so I just want y'all to be excited about these videos and, I want y'all to be excited about document dump. And to me, like, again, to me, it's like super exciting. Like, hey, we got the open records, what's in it. And I don't, 
okay, hey, Milo's on, oh, not on Substack, not on Substack, okay. Um, I don't know, like, are y'all excited? Is it is it exciting for y'all to be like, hey, what's in the open records? And if so, I think it would be a good segment, and I'll keep doing it every Friday. So that, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, what other updates? Again, uh, if you're a channel member, uh, since most of the channel members are watching now, uh, I did post the Ranger Dog video for channel members only. I don't think many of y'all have seen it. So you have to go to my channel and go to the members only tab. And then you'll find that uh, that dog video. So you'll probably want to check that out sometime this week. And it's about an hour long. But uh, if you have like studio headphones or anything, put those on. Listen in a quiet environment. You can catch most of the dialogue. You won't be able to hear as much from your phone speakers. Um I first watched it in the car when I was uh, going for Thanksgiving to see my family, and I missed a lot of the stuff. I had to rewatch the whole thing in here in the studio. All right. Um, Randall, yes, corruption tips. I do have my email address, justinpulliam at gmail.com. I'm sorry. We're not using that email anymore. That's too easy for Joe and them to download. We're doing justin at justinpulliam.com. So please update your address books, guys. If you email me, justin at justinpulliam.com. Your email will be much more secure if you go to justin at justinpulliam.com. Um, let's see, any other updates? I don't believe so. We got some emails here. Let's see. All right. When Tristan said we'll do the substack. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Chuck once said this segment answered some questions. It works. Keep it going. Well, I will do that. Hey, American Amy, how are you? Good to see you, American Amy. And that reminds me one other thing I'm going to do. I'm starting a new channel that will be about cop watching because I think cop watching is very, very important. I love cop watching. I wish I could spend more of my time cop watching, but these corruption reports take a lot of time. If it was up for me, they wouldn't be able to do a call without me being there, but it doesn't work that way, but I do want to encourage cop watching. Now, I think the best way to publish your cop watching is local base, either by your city or county on Facebook. Far superior. However, again, this can be an expensive activity. I can't help do huge grants, but what I would like to do is post your uh, more exciting cop watches. So maybe someone's getting searched and arrest, a DWI when the police have a big standoff or whatever. I am going to make a channel for cop watch videos. This is not the, the 1A you know, audits or whatever they call them. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about cop watches, filming the police on calls that are not about, you know, uh, being at City Hall with a camera or whatever. Um, so if you have cop watch videos... Email them over. I'm thinking we can do a revenue share of the AdSense revenue, something like that. I want to make it work for people. I want to get the the exciting cop watches out. I want to make cop watching a thing. To me, cop watching is so, so much more important to society and to getting real news and the sensational stuff that people call a whatever they want to call it. And I'm not going to call it what I want to call it because I don't want to get in trouble tonight. But I hope all of y'all have a great weekend. If y'all want to contact me about any or all of those ideas, my email again, update your address books, justin at justinpulliam.com. Uh, you can also text me and leave a voicemail on my other number. Uh, so y'all have a great weekend. Welcome to the new segment. Thank you for watching. Thank you all uh, for all of your support and all that. And have a great weekend and video on police election oppression coming soon, probably on Sunday afternoon.